your credit score. So important, something I've never talked about on this channel. I'm excited today to talk about your credit score and tips to increasing it, especially if you are young. What is going on? My name is Patrick Kenny. For those of you guys that have never been here before, I have created a channel designed for you to teach you how to make more money from the internet. If you are new around here, I'd ask that you click that subscribe button and also click that like button to let me know that you're enjoying this video. Today, what I want to talk about is increasing your credit score, how to have good credit, but also do it, especially if you were young. For those of you guys that don't know me, I'm currently 23 years old. I've managed to have a really good credit score without much credit usage. And in today's video, I wanna talk about, first of all, what credit is, but second of all, tips and tricks to maintaining a high credit score. So first of all, what is credit? As you guys know, credit typically comes in the forms of credit cards and or loans, where a company, a bank, will loan you money and you pay them back at a later date. They make a lot of money from doing this from a lot of irresponsible spenders, but in today's video, we're gonna learn how to be responsible spenders. So, First things first, we need to talk about how a credit score is created. Okay, credit scores are created through a few different elements and each element has different weights of importance and I'll talk about that as well. But number one, obviously, as you can imagine, your payment history is the most important component when it comes and it, it takes up you know around 30% of your credit score. That's what it makes it up of. But your payment history is extremely important. This means just paying back those banks on time. Now, for a lot of people, they think with credit cards that that means just paying the minimum. No, that's not what it means. That means paying off your credit card on time. You need to pay off every single month in full. And that is what a good payment history comprises of. So people that are telling you to pay off a little bit or telling you to pay off the minimums, even though I hope nobody's ever told you that, pay it off in full every single time, okay? Now, secondly, when we talk about credit score and we talk about each element, some of them are not gonna have the importance as others, but another one that has a lot of importance is your utilization, okay? Now, your utilization, say, is typically around 20%, might be a little bit lower, uh, as far as just deciding what your credit score is, but utilization means how much of your credit are you actually using? So I'm gonna switch marker colors here real quick. Let's say you've got a $1,000 credit limit. The max you should be using on that credit card and spending is $200, okay? Meaning 20% is the max you should be spending any given time on credit cards. The reason that this is, is this shows the banks that you are not using them in order to live. People that have a $1,000 credit card, and let's say we'll have two people, they both have a $1,000 credit card, one of them only pays $200 each time, only, only racks up $200 and pays it off. The other person racks it up to the max $1,000 and pays it off. Both pay it off. The person that doesn't actually rack it up to $1,000 every time, will actually have the better credit score. Now, on this note, typically if people have $1,000 credit cards, they are able to pay things off in full. But one trick that you can do if you have a low credit score, but you're still trying to build it and you're trying to use it, is just because you have a payment date doesn't mean that you have to wait until that payment date to pay it off. Just pay it off over and over and over early. Maintain a balance that's low utilization. Maintain it at 0% utilization if you can. Meaning, after every single day that you have used your credit card, credit card, go home and pay it off. The people that have credit cards should have the money in the bank to, to, to pay for everything that they have done. It should not be a person that, you know, oh, I'll be getting the money next month, let's just use the credit card to pay for this stuff. That's not what credit cards should be used for. You should only use a credit card if you already have the money in the bank. And the reason that I like to do that is because then you're kind of using it as a debit card but you're allowing yourself to build credit, which is needed for mortgages, car loans, business loans, et cetera, personal loans. But it's also, it's a good habit because then you can reap the rewards of credit points and traveling for free, which is what I've done all of this year through that. 
Okay, so that's your second element. And your number three, when we talk about your, your score and we talk about actually building your score, is how long you've had it, so your length. Now this is, you know, 10, 15% of your score, or whatever. Uh, these are not exact values. I'm just kind of weighing them for you from most important to least important. But length of history, this is tough. This is tough because for me personally, I'm 23 years old and I've only had credit for about three years. So it's really difficult to have a high length of history when I'm, my length of history of life isn't that long. And so this is just one of those things that it's, it's only 15%. It's not like it's going to overwhelm you. You're going to have to battle it. The longer you do all of this, the better. The longer you have credit, the better. So your length of history only gets better, obviously, with time. But you have to keep in mind that. So if you're a young guy and you've only had a, a credit card for a year, no wonder your score is not as high as you want it to be. Whereas a guy that's had a credit score around and had a credit card for 30, 40 years has a higher score. It's no reason, right? So that's important as well. Uh, there is five elements here, so I'm just gonna notch these down. Okay, number four and number five are a little bit different, okay? So number four, you could call inquiries, they call it, or new credit lines. Okay, so we'll, we'll call this new lines. Okay, we'll say 10%. And number five, as I say, as I like to call it, is the mix. We'll call it 10%. All these values will be a little bit different, dependent dependent on the situation uh, as far as weight goes. But new lines means how much new credit have you gone out and gotten? So there's, there's a few caveats to this. If you go out and you say you in the same year add, say three or four credits, credit cards, what's difficult to happen is when you add four credits, credit cards, that impacts and that lowers your length of credit history because every new card is a new length of history. So just because you've had one card for 10 years, when you open the second card and you've had that one for one month, that impacts your length of credit history because your average length of credit history, is it's, it's the average of all those cards. So that goes down, that impacts your credit score. However, it helps your utilization. Your utilization is more important than your length. So that's why it is actually important to go out and get more credit. Now, I would recommend following a rule which is the 424 rule. I would not ever get more than four new lines of credit every two years, every 24 months. 424 rule is, is important. Finally, your mix, it just really tells the bank, it tells these credit card companies how responsible you are as a, as a borrower of their credit. So the mix is, you know, if you've, if you've only had a mortgage, but you've never had a credit card, that doesn't tell them much about your spending habits. But if, you have, if you've had a business loan, a personal loan, if you've had a, a car loan, if you've had a mortgage and you have multiple credit cards, that tells them that you're, you're mature enough and you're responsible enough to really finagle all of this and maintain proper payment history, proper utilization, length of credit history, the whole nine yards. All of this is needed in, 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 to ensure that you have a higher credit score and you have the best possible credit score possible. So this is the bare bone basics credit 101 for you young guys specifically. Maybe this helps somebody that was older. What I would focus on is getting your first card and then adding a couple cards each year. And uh, at the beginning, you want to add four every 24 at the beginning. Get that because that won't impact your length of credit history as much as if you open them up later down the line. And then what you can do is you can actually start to get this utilization lowered because if you get, if you only have one credit card for $1,000, but you suddenly go out and get four and they all have $1,000, now you have $4,000 worth of credit and that 200 bucks is no longer 25%. That 200 bucks is much less on a percentage scale utilization and that ultimately will increase your credit score. This is really important for all of you guys, but this is important for a, a starter because we need credit. We need to leverage credit. You have to leverage credit in order to get ahead. And you know, I'm not uh, a full you know, leverager, but I'm also not a Dave Ramsey where cash only is a good thing. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. I like to know that I have the money in the bank, but then I like to know that I can use credit to, of course, uh, increase credit score for a better chance of interest rates down the line, but also get those bonus perks such as cash back, travel, all those sort of things. If you have any questions, feel free to, to comment down below. Again, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also click that like button. I hope this helps you guys today. 
and I'll see you guys on the next video.